Eswatini caught between China and Taiwan chance to become bloody. When a peaceful kingdom in Africa is getting tense there is most likely a wider reason. In the kingdom of Eswatini may be the China-Taiwan conflict. China wants a new government in Eswatini, and now may be the time for this communist giant to do the magic. The current calm situation in Eswatini's capital city Mbaban with shops closed and empty streets may be the silence before a perfect storm. According to sources external forces bringing in ammunition to the Eswatini capital. Besides young protesters wanting to get more influence over the country, there may be a major power working the situation in the background. This power may be the People's Republic of China. Walter Mzambi, a former foreign minister for Zimbabwe and familiar with geopolitics in Africa thinks, China has many reasons to see the King Gun in Eswatini. It's not a coincidence that the United States is building one of the largest embassies in the world in this small country Eswatini. The bigger question may be China and the desire by this world power to minimize the influence of its breakaway province Taiwan, what is also known as the Republic of China. A new government in Eswatini will most certainly switch from recognizing the People's Republic of China over the Republic of China, known as Taiwan. China would love this and it's important to this communist superpower. Therefore it may not be a coincidence that the Communist Party of Eswatini today confirmed that His Majesty, King Mswati III has fled his country and said he was reportedly in Johannesburg, South Africa. The acting Prime Minister of the Kingdom denies this. The King allegedly left amid pro-democracy protests sweeping the Kingdom of 1.16 million people in the last few days. Eswatini is a member of the United Nations, the Commonwealth of Nations, the African Union the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, and the Botswana-based Southern African Development Community. The People's Republic of China is known to have great influence over SADC. Some say the Southern African Development Community has lost on importance, irritating China. For the Chinese government, the advantages of engaging with Africa are clear. China has used its investment in Africa to gain access to the continent's vast commodity resources, including oil, precious metals, and minerals crucial to the production of emerging technologies such as electric vehicle batteries. Africa also represents an attractive market for China's construction firms, which face excess capacity at home and are eager to find new outlets. However, many times the benefits of these projects do not flow to the broader African workforce. China's funding of Africa's infrastructure projects also often comes with requirements that borrower countries select Chinese suppliers making it more difficult for other countries, including the United States, to participate in Africa's infrastructure projects. Beijing has also been able to leverage its engagement in Africa into support on the international stage. For instance, China has used its presence in Africa to isolate Taiwan diplomatically. All African nations, with the exception of Eswatini, have recognized Beijing over Taipei. African leaders have also expressed support for Beijing's territorial claims in the South China Sea and made public statements in support of Beijing during the 2019 protests in Hong Kong. The consequences for Africa are mixed. While Africa has an immense need for infrastructure that remains unmet, the projects that China funds are often selected through opaque means, exacerbating corruption problems. Moreover, China's funding comes at a price, contributing to an unsustainable buildup of debt in many African countries. These lending practices have led to accusations of new colonialism, and in the wake of the economic slowdowns caused by the COVID-19 outbreak, African countries have increasingly called for debt relief. China has so far been silent to those requests, raising the question of whether the United States and other international donors will be left footing the bill. While China has publicized its humanitarian public health efforts in Africa during the COVID-19 pandemic, many Africans are skeptical and have expressed concern that the equipment donated by China may be of poor quality. The Kingdom of Eswatini is one of the 15 countries that recognize the Republic of China, also known as Taiwan. It is the only country in Africa that does not have diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China. The Chinese government has increased pressure on Eswatini one of Taiwan's few remaining diplomatic allies, in order to compel the small country to cease its diplomatic recognition of the ROC and to instead recognize the PRC. This has primarily taken the form of economic threats against Eswatini. Eswatini is a small country and is presided over by King Mswati III, who has been in power for 50 years. Eswatini is one of the world's few remaining absolute monarchies. Taiwan retains its diplomatic allies because they speak up for it in international organizations. However, 
Many of Taiwan's diplomatic allies have poor human rights records, including Eswatini, Honduras, and other countries. Given Taiwan's economic largesse in comparison to these countries, Taiwan is routinely accused of engaging in dollar diplomacy and trading off economic benefits to its diplomatic allies in return for recognition, or even paying off corrupt politicians in such countries in return for recognition. In engaging in dollar diplomacy, then, Taiwan attempts to outspend China, which usually attempts to trade off economic incentives in return for switching recognition. China also stands to gain from that many of Taiwan's diplomatic allies are located in strategic locations for maritime routes. China has adopted quite a different approach to Eswatini, however, threatening to break off diplomatic relations with Eswatini, as well as cut off economic benefits. China has also rolled out restrictions on where Swazi citizens can apply for visas to visit China, restricting Swazi citizens from applying for visas anywhere except for the Chinese embassy in Pretoria. Likewise, perhaps most significantly, the Chinese government has threatened to pressure other African nations to diplomatically and economically isolate Eswatini. China promised win-win relations between Eswatini and China if Eswatini switched recognition to the People's Republic of China but, again threatened economic retaliation if Eswatini did not do so, something which could be quite threatening. E-Turbo News reached out to the U.S. Embassy in Eswatini, but the phone switchboard was not answered.